Today, we are going to be talking about Plex clients, or more specifically, instead of getting into that really nerdy stuff of like, how fast does it take for a 4K video to load? Instead, I wanna talk about some real world experiences with using multiple different types of clients and actually get a little bit of feedback from somebody else. That way, it's not just, oh, Jason said this is better than the other one. No, instead, we have a second opinion. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits. Like I said, I wanna talk about some Plex clients today, but I wanted to bring in a second opinion. Hi. Hi. Second opinion. So I'm not going to be covering every single Plex client that I've covered in the past, primarily because a lot of Plex clients, in my personal opinion, have become favorites or my go-to. And since recently, we have been basically adding TVs to every place in the house, living room, bedrooms, bathrooms, everywhere. Uh, we have gotten a lot of experience with trying out all of the very various different types of clients. So I wanna talk about today how some of them are easier to use, how some of them get just discarded right away, and some of them we more or less probably kind of love. I think, mm -hmm. I think, I, I love some of them, you know. So here are the two primary ones. Well, there's actually three, but one didn't make it and I can't even find the box. In front of us, we have the Amazon Fire Cube. This is the second generation and we have the 4K Roku. Now this is not actually the devices because those are hooked up currently to the TVs, but I did find the box. I looked for the Apple box, but all I found was the remote. I mean, I don't really care about the Apple box. It is what it is. So let's start out. We have an Amazon and we have a Roku. So if you, you have one in the bedroom, one in the living room, you primarily use them the both. If you had to pick which one for both of them, which one would you go with? I would choose the Amazon Fire Cube, actually. I have been a Roku person for years and I like the Roku very much, don't get me wrong, but using this device has been really user-friendly and really easy and has given me more opportunities to see more apps and what they offer. Uh, whereas this just shows the apps. So. Gotcha. And before really we used the 4K Roku, you had like that little, that little tiny pebble one that, mm -hmm. you know, really sucked. But has the, the, the interface, the experience going from that tiny one to the actual full size one, did that change a lot for you or is it, do they just pretty much act the same? They pretty much act the same. To me, I didn't really notice much of a difference, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So when for you what say, I use it for anyways. Yeah. So when you say this one gives you more options, like obviously we run Plex. We got a lot of Plex stuff. Uh, so that is, you know, one of our primary sources of entertainment. So uh, both of these run Plex fantastically. <laughs> When it comes to subtitles, because you are addicted, <laughs> addicted to subtitles, do you notice a difference between the two? Like, which one do you think picks it up the best? Because hmm. um, that's a big deal. <laughs> Oddly enough, it is. I don't know why I have issues. I don't know, maybe I'm 90 years old or my ears are anyways. Um, hmm. I don't know, honestly, they both, um, Probably, I think I've noticed there's been less errors and issues with the subtitles with Plex on this one, on yeah. Amazon. That's what I was gonna say, because yeah. like when we're like laying down watching TV and we got the subtitles on, sometimes the Roku just, it, it gets out of sync. Mm, yeah, like that's it'll, right. it'll be like five seconds ahead. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, like, like you get this predictive thing. I hate subtitles in general because I cannot avoid reading them, but sometimes it's nice because you don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So I can say like just from using both of them a lot, the Amazon Fire TV is the Fire TV Cube is much more reliable with keeping the subtitles in sync. Mm -hmm. So that if I had to, you know, just choose directly off subtitles, I yeah. would feel like the, the Amazon Fire Cube would be just a little bit more reliable. Uh, but for other apps, you use Netflix? Netflix, yes, mainly you use Netflix. Amazon oh, yeah. Prime mm -hmm. Video, right? Yes. And then that's all preloaded on that, which yes. is another big selling point. Right. Now, before we jump into that, 
<laughs> Let's talk about that apple. <laughs> so um, during our adventures, Cliff Notes, right? We were trying to get a TV to work. It kept shutting off. And we thought maybe it had something to do with the clients going into some sort of sleep mode arc thing. They didn't really know. But we were testing the sound bars and clients' mixtures. I briefly hooked up the Apple TV. Very briefly. I have, I have a 4K Apple TV that is a HomeKit hub in the server room. And I didn't use it for anything else other than just be powered on so it can control HomeKit things. So I was like, you know what? Let's try that out. The Apple TV itself doesn't change too much, but the remote, because this is the last generation, not like the, the most current, but this is the previous generation Apple TV remote. And on a scale of like, I don't know, abortions to Hitler, like where would you place this remote? Like Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, yeah. like I yeah. was like, oh cool, this remote's Apple, it looks so neat. And I'm using it, I'm like, I want my, my, my remotes back. <laughs> yeah, so you have the touch screen and this was actually a big thing in my comparison videos when I'm, I'm talking about clients, uh, a huge, huge focus was the remote because mm -hmm. the remote controls everything, whether or not you have to have multiple remotes, whether or not, you know, you can find it in the dark. Uh, like there's so many different aspects to that. And the Apple remote is by far the worst piece of garbage to ever exist when it comes to media clients. They have a new one that has like a rotary thing and I have not used it yet because I have PTSD from this thing. So mm -hmm. I'm scared of it, but you know, really when it comes down to remotes, the Apple sucks. So on that topic, and that's why Apple isn't even considered, it's back in my server room. So on that topic, which remote do you like the best? Uh, again, Amazon actually. Why? It's, I can literally touch it. I know the buttons. I don't yeah. have to even like to have to look at the remote. With the Roku one, I'm still occasionally having to be like, wait, is that the right one that I want? Um, less is more in the remote situation. Mm -hmm. I love that. I can see that. Um, which is just funny because I've used you know Roku forever. It feels like since pretty much they came out. So yeah. I've completely switched to my my love towards the Fire Cube, the and the voice commands are cool. Oh yeah. I mean yeah. my dad. I haven't is, even explored those that I much. I haven't either. Well, my yeah. dad has his whole yeah. house set up with the Fire Cube, and it's an older gen. So when I actually tried to use yeah. it for streaming. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a choppy. new one, yeah. but he literally just goes north light on computer, north light on and boom, you know? So there's just like, I don't know. We, I feel like we barely scratched the surface on what we can connect this to for. Oh, us. absolutely. There's like so a whole smart home. That's, 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 that's what your dad got into the mm -hmm. smart home, the lights. Yes. I haven't even integrated any of that. Um, but I have randomly explored Alexa commands that worked flawlessly, mm -hmm. like Alexa play music. You know, Alexa, well, what do we do? The shopping. The glow in the dark tennis ball. Yeah, I was the like, dog. Yeah. yeah. Or toilet paper. I started off, I was like, Alexa, add toilet Boom. paper. And it just popped up my shopping list. I'm like, so that's cool. That's, cool. that's like a whole Frank realm of commands that I would, I mean, I feel like we'd have to really affiliate ourselves with. And, and yeah. the Roku doesn't even have that option. Right. Yeah, the Roku doesn't have that. When it comes to remotes, though, the thing I don't like about this, and I don't know if maybe it's a setup thing or what, but it has the volume button on it. On the side. Yeah, on the side, yeah. right? But that doesn't control the TV volume or the soundbar volume. Like, I don't know if that's an arc setting, something that wasn't configured properly on my end, but I know that we're in there watching whatever, and it's like, yeah, we have to have, have two, two remotes. remotes. Right. Yeah, so you have to turn up the thing. But Amazon, it pretty much... One remote. Even without going through the process of setting up the arc, it still somehow is smart enough to just control the TV through the HDMI arc and just kind of auto magically works. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. When I first originally did my client comparison, uh, I did all kinds of things. So uh, I had this Chromecast, which I use more of a testing thing, like for projectors, things like that. I had this Mi Box that I used one time to compare. I have a TiVo stream system, and all of these had major flaws. They are the really slow, had really crappy remotes. They just, like, these aren't even a consideration unless I'm gonna give it away for like a birthday or Christmas present to somebody I don't like. So. <laughs> Not even a consideration. It's really the Apple, the Roku, and the Amazon, and the Apple remote has just gotten rid of itself. So when it really comes down 
to favorite Plex clients, you take what I did before in the past, which is how fast can you load up Plex? How fast can you start a 4K or a 1080p stream? You know, how fast can you scroll through and find movies? And I feel like the, the newest generation of the Fire Cube has just greatly improved to make it probably one of the most usable, user-friendly, robust system. Mm -hmm. And the Apple Prime TV, everyone, or not Apple, I'm sorry, Amazon Prime TV. Everyone has an Amazon Prime. Right. Everyone does. And you get Amazon video with it. As far as I know, can, you can't do that on the Roku, can you? Or is there an app for that? For Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there, there is? There, there is. There is. Yeah. There is. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not as heavily, like, integrated. Right. Like, on the Am the Amazon home screen. The like home they, screen has they super all the push apps it. and featuring what, like, I randomly started watching a show just because it happened to be featured on the home screen. And I just scrolled and I was like, that looks interesting. And I don't even remember what app I was on. So, it just kind of yeah. gives a lot more more opportunity to see things that we wouldn't normally see because you know we don't watch commercials anymore so we don't know what the new cool thing is yeah. so it, it was just kind of a cool little um bonus although i will bonus. say that like with the amazon prime like anytime we try to watch something on amazon prime it gives us like a trailer for something else it, it's i kind didn't of notice that it's kind of annoying right. i think just kind of like that. That like i weird. pay for this why am i paying for commercials so right. that was kind of like one of those eh, type of deals for yeah, me. But that was kind of weird. I forgot about that. It's not too intrusive. It's no. not like, oh, hey, buy Charmin toilet paper in the middle of the thing. So yeah, yeah. it's not that it was a, Yeah. So yeah. at the beginning, and it was like a trailer. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. So when it really comes down to it, at the end of the day, it's all about what you're the most comfortable with. And if you load up the Roku operating system, I mean, you, you get a very basic operating system. It's You get tiles, you got on the left side, you can scroll through and go down to settings and stuff like that. And then you have your home screen and then you just have very rudimentary app icons that essentially just allow you to pick what you want to get into. Amazon Prime is not featured on that. There's no Plex content featured on the home screen. Like you literally just have to go into each individual one. It's much, it's much more raw, much more undeveloped. Whereas the Amazon Fire Cube, and this could be the same thing as the Amazon Fire TV that is really short, like like just more of a square and it's small. Uh, the Amazon Cube just has more speakers or has speakers and Alexa and just kind of more stuff going on with it, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I wanted to try it out. Uh, but the Amazon Fire TV Cube seems way more polished. You have probably the same amount of apps, but... That's really about it. And that's not even talking about headphones. <laughs> yeah, headphones. Headphones was a big deal, I yeah. feel like. Headphones really is probably what that's... really nudged you in the direction of the Amazon. Right, Q. well, because he goes to bed earlier than I do. So yeah. I use headphones, but you know, You got those ones. Bluetooth from yeah, Verizon or whatever they yeah, are. Like like Sony, what whatever. Yeah, like Sony, whatever. They're great. Um, and initially we had, the Roku set up and I was like, oh, I can get an app on my, I found out I could do the app, mm -hmm. connect my speakers through that or something. That was through your phone, right? Yeah, it was yeah, through yeah. my phone. So you had a Bluetooth, you had to set up the Bluetooth, connect to your phone. Yep. That, and then the Bluetooth logged into your your Roku account. And it had to use, it had to be on the same Wi-Fi. Uh, it had to be on the same local, like the same LAN, the same network yeah. internally. But a specific kind of Wi Fi had to be a very specific internal LAN IP address range. And mine, my internal IP address range is slightly unique. So I had to go into my Unify stuff and actually create an entire different subnet for her phone to connect to wirelessly in order for Roku to accept that as a local area network in order to get your headphones to work. I remember because I called yep. that Wi-Fi Blue Waffle. Yep. We were <laughs> literally talking about that because I didn't know what that meant. And it just became, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that yeah. one's gone now. Our neighbors don't have to see that yeah. no longer. Yeah. So, because that was so annoying. And that was, was, that was a huge pain. That was a pain. It took a while. Now, when you when you did actually get that set up and you used it, because we have that Samsung soundbar, did it 
automatically shut off the audio to the sound bar? Or did you have to turn it down? I don't even remember. I don't even know if we had started realizing that was a problem yet. That, this was like fresh when we got the yeah, TV. Yeah. And I'm... I, I, because some part sure, of me, some part of me thinks that I had to turn down the sound bar just to, just to let the Bluetooth and the thing and everything go through the Roku. Like it was just like you have to mute the sound bar. Oh. I, I feel like yeah, that's what I had to do. Yeah, you around with it more than me for sure. Yeah, it, because it would play both. It would be like speakers, headphones. You know, it, oh, okay. it was such a roundabout way of getting the headphones to work on a Roku. Yeah, because I think that was I was at work and I think you had switched to this and I came home and you. You know, I had never tried this before. I remember now. Cause, yeah. yeah, so I didn't really mess with this, but then it was just like, boom, I turn on my headphones, sound cuts, it connects, done. I turn off my headphones, back to the speakers. So I don't know, that was like, oh, that was really easy. Yeah, it's just auto switch over. <laughs> That's the easiest part. Like when you have something where you click a button, literally, and everything switches over, yeah, it's just like. Yeah, that was impressive. Oh, that's way better than loading up my app, connecting to a different Wi-Fi, making sure everything co-lines. Uh, when you had that play, was there any delay, like in the audio? Was the sync ever off? Oh, God, I can't remember. I feel like it's been a, it's been a while, but I, I, I feel don't... like it could have been, but I don't know. I, I can't say that. I can't I feel say like that's there a was negative. something weird with it. Yeah. <sighs> Choppy. No, there was. Uh, you said something about there was it was choppy, like it would it kind of cut in and yes, out. Yes, 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 yes. That's what it was. Yeah. So yeah, it, it you was have to connect weird. it to your Wi-Fi. No, headphone Bluetooth to your phone to a Wi-Fi to a Wi-Fi media player just to get all that audio going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. as you can imagine, it's a lot of uh, a lot of points for failure at that point. So you get choppy audio, so it would cut out. And then on top of all that, the uh, sound bar would turn off and turn off the TV. But that's like a whole different. That's a whole yeah, different. That's a whole different <laughs> freaking adventure. Uh, so like moving that. over to the San or to the Amazon Cube, that was a great thing is because it has the Bluetooth built in. I was able to pair up her Bluetooth headsets or headset. And then as soon as she powers that on, the Amazon uh, Fire Cube would automatically switch everything over. And it's mm -hmm. just all plays through that. And if she turns it off, it automatically go back goes back to the sound bar, and it's just seamless. Effortless. It really yeah. is. And if you're for whatever reason you lose your remote, you can say Alexa pause. Uh, you want to play it, Alexa play. If you want to switch over and start playing, you know, music, you'd be like Alexa launch Pandora, and that is just something that the Roku doesn't have. No. I think no. it has something on the remote. You can push it. And speak to it, but... And, yeah, speak through the remote, like a microphone, but that's that seems like a freaking a horse and buggy compared to yeah, a Ferrari. Yeah, it's not going to have the know? interface that, yeah. the, that this offers by being able to seamlessly switch from... It just it, There's just more technology behind the company that builds this than there is with this. Absolutely. You know? So the, the interface is just much larger and much more capable of... No. Saying Alexa, do this, and she freaking does it, man. <laughs> it's crazy. The it's, shopping it's a, list thing was hilarious. It's a little the other freaky. Day. You're yeah. like, add toilet paper. It's like, ah, oh, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, remove. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, blah, blah, blah. She's gonna like, give us like six God. acts. I'm like, whoa. Like, stop listening to me, you oh, weirdo. God. I was like, yeah, well, our phones do too, so, you know. Everything listens Whatever. to everything, so. It is what it is. This is our life now. We're just living it. If you. <laughs> If you had to change anything with uh, with the Amazon Cube, what would you change? Hmm. Um, I really, I'm like looking at the remote. Cause remotes are always my thing. There's really nothing I have found that I don't like about it yet. I really don't. You, I don't have any complaints yet. Well, okay, so your dad, no, I don't. your dad's Cube is the older one. You yes. said you lost the remote, but you ended up finding it. Yes. So I wonder, I, I, I don't know, and I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me, I wonder if you could say Alexa, find my remote. I wonder if that's a thing. Oh, yeah. I never did try that when I was on the hunt at his house. I think I did look up ways to use, like, okay, like how you can use your phone as a remote for the Roku. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. So when I was searching for the remote for the Cube, I was looking that up. I cannot mm. remember. I think I texted you about it. But then I found the remote, so I never tried any yeah. of it. Well, that is one like good thing with the remote for this because there's actually a button on the Roku that will make your remote just start yeah. screaming. So that is a bonus. But I feel like 
being Amazon and all that, they might have an option to say, Alexa, find my remote. I kind of want to go like, I can't confirm or, or <laughs> no, Yeah, I, I don't know. But if that's not an existing thing, I wish that would be one thing that I would want it to change cool. is to make the remote easier to find. And also the remote, it, it doesn't light up, does it? Like in mm -mm. the dark. Yeah, it doesn't light up. That kind of sucks. I mean. Yeah. Now, all of this is completely ignoring the NVIDIA Shield TV. Uh, and the only reason why it's ignoring the video shield, the NVIDIA Shield TV is because that's set up downstairs. I don't use it as often. And when I power it on, I have a full on home theater system. Sometimes it turns everything on correctly. Sometimes it doesn't. My systems are old. And really the only biggest focus that I had on the NVIDIA Shield was its audio support. Uh, there's various different compatibility things when it comes to audio. And I've covered that in my more detailed nerdy breakdown of the Plex clients. And the NVIDIA Shield is hands down just one of the best when it comes to handling audio. So if you have, you are like an audiophile, you got a full on surround sound setup, Atmos, 7.1, whatever you have set up, the NVIDIA Shield is gonna be where it's at. My only thing with the NVIDIA Shield is that sometimes it doesn't always play well. It's usually pretty good. For the most part, it operates just fine. But I absolutely love the remote. It lights up, it's easy to find. It, it's kind of like, you know, triangular, so it's been really good. But when it comes to day-to-day -day usage, you know, whether it's in the living room, bedroom, whatever, and you just need some basic setups, it, it's really come down to the Amazon or the Roku. And I have no desire, or I have had no desire to move the NVIDIA Shield up to one of those just because the interface, the apps, the Amazon Prime, loading that, you got the Netflix, you got the, the Plex, like just kind of everything is just so, it's just so perfectly, I don't know, it's so perfectly presented. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like the Amazon, sadly enough, which I really did not expect this, sadly enough has been my personal favorite with a Roku in a close second. Yep. So user friendly. User friendly is where it's at. Your your dad had the old one and you said that things loaded slow on that. Like super slow. Like really slow. Now was it slow getting to the apps or was it slow like when you're playing it it would start buffering? It just you you would push a button and it would take a moment to load. So I just basically had to learn to just push and wait. Oh. So yeah. no matter what I was doing. Uh, the videos played fine once they started playing, but... Yeah, see, that would be mind-numbing. Like, mm -hmm. that's like dial-up service in the 90s. Like, I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> like, that would be crazy, so... But it still worked great for um, um, it being, a, you know, used for his smart home. Yeah. Now, did you... You loaded Plex and yes. Netflix... Both. And probably set up his Amazon Prime, because I would imagine he has Amazon Prime. Yeah, he, I mean, he does all the commands just through the cube without the TV or anything, but it's really more just because he's disabled and it's to turn on lights and turn off lights and, yeah. you know, Which goes turn back up to the those. heater. He's got to connect it to the nest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that ties all into those commands that I haven't even yeah. began to explore. Right. And that's all really. he uses it for. That's all you use it for. Yeah. Just Alexa He's this, like, Alexa oh, that. There's a, you can download apps. I'm like, yeah, here's your remote. <laughs> now you can do all these things. Because he was using <laughs> he was using his cable. Or, I'm sorry. Direct TV. Satellite TV. Direct TV. And then the app usage on there, which is also really slow at loading and drove me insane. But that could have been the case. Wait, so. I, but that, he, was, that was the, that was the, uh, Kate, or, uh, the satellite. So that was slow too. Anyways, just so much slowness. So you're saying that he didn't use the DVR or the, the box that came with DirecTV and actually used the DirecTV app? No, he had the box. Oh. No, no, no. Oh, he had okay. the box. Okay. He was just okay. using that for like, because gotcha. he had a Netflix account. Like he uses Netflix on that. Oh. So this was not even being used for media streaming in any way. Wow. Yeah. So that was kind of the shock because I didn't even realize that's what I was like. Dad, that's a cube. It was cute. <laughs> it was cute. You I need, educated him. You need a new ca uh, cube. I know. It needs upgraded Christmas drastically. Christmas is coming. <laughs> right? And he also, this also works with uh, all those, what was it, the Amazon Dots? 
Oh yeah, he's got a dot in every room. Yeah. Literally, probably every hallway. I don't know, I didn't really pay attention, but. Yeah, so long story short, it's the Amazon ecosystem that kind of mm -hmm. ropes you into everything. Whereas the Roku is a really great player, and if this didn't work, I would revert back to the Roku as my preferred player, mm -hmm. unless I'm doing the full surround sound downstairs, like the whole home theater experience. That's where the NVIDIA Shield is is my go-to. But when it comes to like running a sound bar on a TV, mounted on a wall, just in the living room, things like that, these things are simple, they're small, they have a good remote. Um, and overall the Amazon, I would say the Amazon Cube is, is probably my go-to, which is highly unexpected <laughs> because I used to hate Amazon Cube. I really did. I did a review with not not these, these are obviously newer, but the ones I did before, I did a review and I was just like, the Amazon Fire Cube is slow, it's bulky, it doesn't respond to anything. Hmm. Like, like I had so many issues with it. I was like, I absolutely hate the Amazon Fire Cube. The Fire TV that didn't have all the, the Alexa crap and mm. the speaker crap and all that other stuff was way better. It's like they took the internals of the original, uh, the Fire TV, and they just added more stuff onto the existing hardware, which mm -hmm. bogged it down and made it unreliable. Mm. So I feel like now that they came out with a newer one, they beefed it up, and now it's a much better user experience. That's awesome. So, well guys, that was really what I wanted to talk about today is not the nitty gritty, nerdy things that I used to talk about when comparing Plex clients. Uh, for me, I think it's the real world usability. What do people experience? What are the frustrations? What are the wishes? It doesn't matter if a 4K video file loads in 0.5 seconds versus 0.7 seconds. Like, great, that's really good. You wanna scroll through your poster arts and one is slightly faster than the other? Okay, great, that's you know nitty gritty nerdy stuff. But when it really comes to real world usability, things that I didn't even think about, like headphones, mm -hmm. never thought about that before. Never thought about how much of a headache it would have been to hook up this to headphones. Uh, having the Alexa commands that I've really never used. These are things that I've never thought about. So if you are in the market for finding the perfect Plex client, I would take these things into consideration and really think about what you use out of your home entertainment center. And if you're using Plex and you use other things, Hulu, Amazon uh, Video, Netflix, things like that, and you want better integrations, you want a more user-friendly interface, even though you get more ads on the Amazon, <laughs> but you want a, a better, more user-friendly interface, these might be things to consider. However, having a Roku that's very simple, less ads, easy to navigate, and just kind of raw dog, like here's what you get, load an app and play it, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if you want a little bit of fluff to your clients, maybe to consider something like the Amazon Fire Cube. With all that said, I wanna thank you for your input. You've actually helped me kind of find new favorites and everything, so, uh, you know, definitely valuable input. Guys, I wanna know what you think, so leave a comment in the section down below what your actual favorite is, not because of technical specs, not because of how fast something loads, whatever, but just real world user usability. I wanna know what you use, what your go-to is, and if you purchased one, like let's say the Amazon or the uh, the Apple TV, if you purchased something like that and returned it or just shoved it in the closet and never broke it out again, I mean, you know, or use it as a home kit hub, <laughs> let me know that as well. Obviously, there's so many different options. TiVo Stream, My Box, Me Box, Chromecast. There's all kinds of different options. But really when it comes down to it, there's only a few big hitters. Apple, Roku, Amazon, and NVIDIA. Which one do you like the most? As always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a great day. <laughs> <laughs>